Good evening to you all, and uh, thank you all uh, for, uh, for coming in this uh, last uh, week of, uh, of the term and of the academic year here. Um, and for this uh, last globalization lecture, I mean, this will be the last, at least, of this cycle of globalization lectures that uh, started uh, eight years ago uh, when actually I joined SOAS because I con I've been convening this cycle from the beginning. We've had uh, a whole range of, uh, of uh, speakers, very prestigious speakers, we only, even including one Nobel Prize, uh, uh, Shirin Ebadi, including Noam Chomsky, Samir Amin, and a lot of uh, uh, famous academics. Um, so we're bringing this, the cycle to an end today, and I would say it's a, it's a, it's a great end, uh, although I, uh, of course, would have uh, liked us to be more than that, but uh, uh, because the, the occasion is indeed um, a rare one, which is, uh, I would even say that, as far as I can remember, I don't think that from the beginning of the Arab uprising we have uh, here had anyone who's played such a prominent role in the uprising in her country uh, as our, uh, our speaker for, uh, for, for this evening. So let me just remind you quite quickly uh, about uh, Ahlam Bilhaj, Dr. Ahlam Bilhaj in the sense of the medical doctor. Uh, she's a specialist in, the, in child uh, uh, psychiatry, which uh, she practices and teaches as a professor uh, in, uh, in, in Tunis, in Tunisia, her country. Uh, she's a unionist. She's the deputy general secretary of the uh, National Union of University uh, Hospital Physicians. And... <clears throat> She is a co-founder and advisory committee member of the Coalition for Sexual and Corporal Rights in Muslim Societies. And I would say more um, uh, outstandingly, or uh, she has been the chairwoman of the Tunisian Association of Democratic Women at the very moment when the uh, uprising uh, took place, and in this capacity, she was in this position between 2011 and 2013. So that is during the, 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 the whole, uh, the, 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 the crucial years of, uh, of the uprising. Uh, she has played a, a very prominent role uh, in that regard. She's been one of the prominent figures, uh, very well-known figure uh, in Tunisia, in, in her country. Uh, for this uh, uh, prominent activity, she's been awarded the Simone de Beauvoir Prize uh, for uh, uh, 2012. Uh, Ahlem Belhaj is uh, uh, also an author of, uh, of several books, reports, uh, uh, pamphlets on, uh, on, well, on issues of her professional interest, uh, dealing with uh, childhood, uh, womanhood and the rest, and on, on issues of her um, democratic, feminist, uh, and political interests. Uh, and, I mean, she's been uh, uh, very much uh, solicited by, by the press. Uh, I mean, you, you've got uh, a few examples from uh, the English-speaking press, but uh, there's, of course, much more in the French-speaking press due the, to the uh, closer cultural ties between Tunisia and, uh, and France for, uh, for historical reasons. And it is for the same reasons, actually, that uh, Ahlem wanted me to apologize for her English. And I told her the Londoners are the most tolerant people on earth when it comes to speaking their language, since it's such a cosmopolitan city. And actually, unlike uh, some other people whom I won't name, if you speak uh, English badly, people will tell you, well, at least you know another language which is very kind, very nice, and very uh, internationalist. So I told her, you should feel at ease, don't worry. The key point, the message, I'm sure, will go through. 
and after listening to her uh, talk, we'll be able to have a discussion, which I'm sure also will be uh, very interesting. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Ahlam Belhash. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Gilbert Ashkar. Uh, it is a pleasure to be with you uh, this, uh, this night. Uh, as uh, Gilbert said, I, uh, I apologize for my English, it, but I try to, uh, to do my best to explain my uh, talk. So, um, uh, we can say there is five years exactly five years, it, it was the 17th of December 2010 when uh, the process began. So uh, five years of uh, intense political change in the region. Five years filled with a lot of hopes, struggles, but also with a lot of fears and insecurities, if you, as you imagine. And the main thing I want to speak about is the five years with an amazing engagement of Arab women in the women in the call of for liberty, dignity, equality, social justice, for a better world free from, from discrimination and violence. So after five years, the assessment of this process is essential and important. Is it still possible to talk about a revolutionary process? We speak a lot about this process or the national and international resistance has already won the fight. <laughs> Social and gender relations should, should be at the center of any appraisal of the ongoing process. What, did, uh, what role did uh, the women's movement play and what roles can it play in this social and political change? What balance uh, sheet can be drawn with regard to gender relations? Are women the principal losers of the Arab rising, as many pretend? All these questions I try, but I have to say already that it will be very difficult and it will be not possible to, to really answer all, um, um, all these questions because there is two main challenges for me. Uh, by these days, it may seem inappropriate to speak about gender equality when we have armed conflict, violence, terrorism, which are the daily preoccupation of all citizens in the region. Last week in Tunisia, we have many, uh, many deaths secondary to the terrorism. Uh, ex but experience show that uh, the moment while a new reality is drawn is the better moment for new rights and for new rights for women. And now there is a new reality in the Middle East and North Africa, which is, um, which are uh, ongoing, which is ongoing. Mm. The second challenge is the situation of women's rights uh, are so different from an Arab country to another because of history, political, social, and cultural particularity, even if we share a lot of them. So speak about women's rights is really a challenge because it differs from an, a country from a, to another. I will try to analyze achievements on women's rights in the region by focusing on um, Tunisian experience. Of course, I know better, but also where there is uh, some democratic achievement also. And list examples from other Arab countries that went uh, through political change. I think we no longer need to reaffirm the importance of Arab women's participation in all distinctive action to drop Arab dictatorial regimes. On January two, uh, 2011, this participation surprised the international community but no longer now. The question now is, did Arab women manage to transform their political implication to political leadership and to improve women's rights? 
a lot of feminists in the region affirmed early that no democratic transition without women's rights and that gender equality is the core of all process of change and reform track currently taking place in the region. The Tunisian experience is commonly considered as the more successful transition in the region. It has some signs of success, democratic and free election. We had one in 2011 and we had another election in 2014. Uh, uh, press freedom, public liberty and a new constitution, mainly new constitution that I will speak about. After last election on 20, but let's uh, remember the actual situation in Tunisia for those who don't uh, really know uh, political situation in Tunisia. After last election on October 2014, we have a parliament with a majority uh, of a liberal party, uh, Nide Tunes. This, uh, this is the first time I think in an uh, Arab country in the region we have a free uh, election, free and democratic election, and uh, the winner are not uh, Islamist uh, party. So it is uh, uh, the election, electoral mass of this party were mainly uh, women, more than 60% uh, than of uh, electoral mass were uh, women. Um, the government is led by a coalition between four parties, mainly uh, with this party, Nida Tunis, the Liberal uh, Party, and the Islamist uh, party, Nada. Uh, parts of Tunisia's uh, relatively strong civil society, including UGTT. UGTT is the trade union, uh, Tunisian trade union. It is a strong trade union, historical trade union, and business trade union, uh, the Tunisian League for Human Rights and Lawyers intervened to force politicians into compromise in 2014. For that, uh, they had the Nobel Prize for Peace. I think tomorrow they will get uh, the prize. The ongoing process is very complex. The old system remains strong. Political revolutionary forces, mainly Popular Front, is uh, unable to draw political and economic alternatives. Tunisia lives a deep economic crisis and the fundamentalist te uh, te Islamist terrorism is really threatening security in all the region. And structural, structural reforms of police or justice are very uh, low. At the same time, I had to say that uh, the social movement remains strong and that citizen mobilization for uh, what they move on 2011 are still ongoing. Tunisia is called that uh, the lone Arab success story. Tomorrow I, uh, I see an article from Foreign Policy to speak about the lone Arab success story. Is it really as success as that after? But when you compare it with the rest of the region, it seems as the success story, even if uh, there is a lot of problems. Did women's movement contribute to the protection of the transitional path? Did the Tunisian feminist movement as a social movement confirm that women's rights are a condition of success of any process of change? That's what I, I'll try to uh, explain by um, speaking uh, on, uh, about the history of the feminist movement in Tunisia. So uh, I can say that it is possible to, to say that the history of feminist um, thought in Tunisia find its roots in uh, the early 20th, last century, through the emergence of progressive readings of cultural and religious texts by many intellectuals, most prominently Tahar Haddad, in his book issued in 1930, Women in Sharia and Society is still used as a reference. I just mentioned that in this book, Tahar Haddad asked for ending polygamy and uh, asked for equality in inheritance. Until now, 
there is no equality in inheritance in, uh, in any country, Arab country. So, but it was in 13, in 30, 1930, that Tar Hadid write that, uh, write that. But I have to mention that the, the um, women's movement beca be, um, bege began with the, the battle of national liberation and the political uh, consciousness of the militants contributed to the development and awareness of the discriminatory practice exercised against them. In this context, I can mention uh, many militants, uh, women's militants. For example, Habiba al-Mansheri, who demanded lifting the veil on women and the abolition of polygamy since early 20th last century. In 1956, Immediately after the independence, the modern state was led by uh, President uh, Bourguiba. Under his rule, a number of positive actions in favor of women were guaranteed by the uh, Code of Personal Statute. This code, uh, in this code, we find the abolition for, uh, of polygamy. Until now, it, uh, we are the first, uh, the, the lone, uh, state where there is a strict abolition of uh, polygamy in, uh, in Arab world, I mean. Uh, requiring a juridical divorce and marriage by mutual consent, the right of adoption. In addition, the state has also decided to educate girls and uh, bet on their role in building a modern Tunisia. Despite maintaining the patriarchal background in the formulation of law, and uh, despite a lot of um, inequality in the legislative text, the combination of these procedures made possible to raise the literacy rate among women, as well as the proportion of women's labor force and ensure the right to reproductive health. I mentioned the right of, uh, to abortion in Tunisia is from uh, the end of 16th, before many country, European uh, country. It wasn't for uh, women's rights, it was for uh, limitation of birth, but women uh, uh, have this change to... Uh, um, With Bourguiba and uh, after with Belani, the question of women's rights was used as a, as a vitrine. I don't know, in, in, it's an English word, vitrine? In vitrine. Window, Window dressing for, uh, for democracy. When they are asked about democracy, they said, uh, we have women's rights. And they tried to, uh, to use it fully and, uh, but uh, reality was uh, that uh, discrimination exists in law and there is a gap between uh, laws and reality. Other thing, uh, few years after, uh, after uh, the, uh, the beginning of 18th, uh, the femi autonomous uh, feminist movement begin and say we don't we know we don't uh, want this kind of uh, feminism state feminism because with Bourguiba and with Ben Ali we have a kind of state feminism when you speak about uh, women's rights they say we are speaking about women's rights we are protecting women's rights so we wait until uh, the end of uh, the 18th to see autonomous feminist movement emerging to say there is no possibility to distinguish between women's rights and political rights. If we are asking for, human, for uh, women's uh, human rights, we are asking for freedom and from, uh, for democracy. And there is no way to speak about democracy in, pub in a private space if there isn't the democracy in public space. And it was the beginning of the autonomous um, feminist movement. This autonomous femi uh, feminist movement has, uh, 
had a leading role in the development of uh, feminist discourse and radical calls for full equality and effective citizenship that does not exclude any right in economic, social, cultural, and political sphere. This speech calls for uh, women's human rights in accordance with the International Convention uh, and mainly uh, in CEDO Convention, International Convention of the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination. And the separation of religion from the state and uh, the religion uh, and the political uh, practice. This speech connects public space with private space and rejects violence against women and calls for action to eliminate it. It also considers the feminization of poverty as a result of economical uh, choices that do not take into account the social justice and discrimination against women. This speech is considers, uh, considers uh, uh, sexual and uh, reproductive rights as uh, human rights also. The particularity of, uh, of movement, uh, women's movement in Tunisia uh, before 2010, that he led a lot of uh, struggles before, and those struggles uh, prepare uh, this movement to, uh, to have uh, this role in, uh, in the revolution. I will speak about briefly about three areas of women's struggle. The first area about the women's struggle before, before uh, 2010 was the struggle of workers and trade unions. On the beginning of this century, thousands of women working uh, on a textile factory uh, did a lot of strikes in the beginning uh, of 2000. Uh, 2000s and those struggles for two three years we have many many really thousands of women in the trade unions or without the uh, the, uh, the solidarity of trade unions uh, inventing a um, lot of kinds of um, uh, of um, of struggles they were, were been uh, in sitting in their factory they have been on hunger strike on strikes and they uh, they um, the first for example the the um, the word social forum tunisian social forum begin with strike of this woman it was an important national movement who marked uh, people the second area of uh, women's struggle, I will uh, speak about uh, the, um, the mining uh, uh, area. Uh, all body now know that um, the Tunisian revolution uh, has their um, first steps in 2008 with, uh, with the, uh, the strikes of uh, uh, in the south of Tunisia, there is a mining, mining is a, it's a mining uh, region, and where situation is really bad, and uh, the um, and uh, all the region in 2008 uh, apprised to ask for uh, for the right of work, for the right uh, of uh, environment, to respect the environment, and uh, to uh, social justice, and this uh, all this struggle. Uh, 30 women began on 2008. For 200, they were on the street to ask for the right of her children to uh, be uh, employed. And after that, hundreds of uh, young people and trade unions come to the struggle. But the beginning was with uh, those women. And after, uh, when uh, many uh, people were arrested, women continue the, uh, the, um, the work and they really marked this uh, pe period. And uh, with Ben Ali, it was the first time he uh, was obliged to, uh, to go back. There is an agreement uh, also, uh, no, uh, the, the third uh, um, area of work where the, all the democratic struggle of, uh, of women uh, civil society last uh, decade uh, of Ben Ali were very strong, 
to speak about uh, dictatorship and to speak about uh, pressure, uh, repression, and to speak. And women uh, uh, take a lot of uh, importance in this struggle, women's uh, feminist movement and uh, association. And uh, uh, what is done in this period is uh, that um, the human rights association, professional association, with, in contact with feminist movement, were obliged to uh, not uh, to fight together only for uh, freedom or for democracy, but, uh, but uh, the specific feminist uh, revendication were uh, adopted by some of them. For example, uh, the uh, fighting against violence were possible. I remember uh, at the beginning when we are, we are together for all uh, things uh, about democracy, but when we speak about violence, we are alone. We are alone as a feminist. And after a few years of work, it was possible to, to bring them to, uh, to speak about uh, women's rights. And uh, all this, uh, this, um, this area of struggles, I think, uh, permit to the uh, feminist movement to have uh, a speech, to have a discourse uh, about uh, women's, uh, women's rights. This speech uh, was, uh, was ready uh, when uh, revolution began. I think I take uh, more than 10 minutes in history and 50 minutes on history. I'll try to, uh, to go. Um. So I will speak after this uh, historical uh, uh, about two mm, important things in the region. I will speak about the fight on uh, constitutional reforms, and I will speak after about violence against uh, women. Uh, and uh, why I speak uh, a lot about the feminist movement in Tunisia is to explain the role that feminist movement in Tunisia play uh, on the first step of transition if uh, uh, for someone or in this uh, process, revol revolutionary process for others. Uh, and uh, why Tunisia uh, managed to, to have this uh, kind of success, I think that uh, the um, women's rights were, uh, uh, were very uh, important. And I try to, to explain that. So a um, few days after the fall of Ben Ali, Tunisian women were on the street to say, no democracy without women's rights. It was the first women's march under the banner of citizenship, equality, dignity, to ensure that gender equality is an important task of the revolution no citizenship, no dignity without ending discrimination. Discrimination. Uh, this March, of course, women were present. Women were present in the street before, but this time it was to speak about women's rights. Uh, and uh, this March was also the first occasion to confirm some of the concerns. The voices calling women to go back to kitchens and some demonstrators were victims of sexual harassment. It was the first signal that the fight will be difficult. It was on 29 of uh, January, just uh, 15 uh, year, uh, days after, uh, after the fall of Ben Ali. The first in this context, uh, the matter uh, was so how to reinforce uh, women's political participation. The first struggle we, we chose to do was the, um, the struggle for women's political participation. And the, the struggle was about parity. Parity, I was a member on the high instance for uh, who prepared the law, uh, electoral law on 2011. And the fight about parity in election was our first fight and was very important fight because of not only it can permit participation of women in political uh, structure, but also it is a message of equality to all society. It was important to say uh, we are equal and parity uh, is a very symbolic uh, uh, message. And um, 
We managed to have this law in, uh, in April 2011 with a big majority in this instance. We have been 80% uh, even Islamic party. Another party w was in uh, for this, uh, not uh, in the beginning, but uh, after uh, many rounds, uh, majority of people were even left party were against parity at the beginning because of, uh, they say we didn't have enough women to, to put on the list. And they say, are they, comp are they competent? Uh, of course, a uh, question of uh, are they qualified, qualified to, to be uh, in, uh, in our lists. So it was the, the first fight, and I think the, uh, the fact that we win this fight uh, at the beginning of the, um, the, the process was very uh, important and marked uh, the other fights. The second challenge was to subscribe women's rights on the new constitution. The election of 2011 brought a big majority of another party this period of the drafting of the Constitution and the founding of the Second Republic saw considerable political volatility and crisis. It hit three governments and the assassination of two of the leaders of the Popular Front, uh, Shukri Belaid and Mohammed Brahmi. Crisis translated the death of differences about social and political models of society we have to choose. A large social debate on the Constitution was engaged about forms of government, ensuring individual and collective freedom, economic and social rights, and women's rights uh, were an important aspect of this societal debate. Why? In this debate, there were many uh, proposals, uh, and civil society and feminist movement propose their own constitution, and they propose, and they are not in the in situation of demands, but uh, they are uh, proposal uh, actors, political actors, and many uh, others, uh, human rights uh, NGOs also propose, trade union propose uh, a constitution, but in all this constitution, we find the fact that we ask for uh, equality between men and women. And the first uh, point in uh, the balance sheet at, at this time was, uh, do we refer to universal uh, human rights or it will be the specific uh, and cultural, uh, not principles, um, reference, 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 easy language, reference. So uh, uh, this, uh, this um, struggle was, uh, this issue was a very important thing. Uh, does the con new constitution will speak about Sharia law or will sp speak about uh, human rights uh, in their universal uh, dimension? And um, and the uh, consensus was difficult to found at the beginning, but it was possible. About women's rights, the, the, the fact was more difficult because of many people accept the um, equality in public sphere, but not in uh, private sphere. We are uh, with parity, no problem with parity, but when we speak about family, it is uh, no longer possible. It was, we have more difficulty with private sphere than uh, public sphere. For example, when we have, uh, we have been at uh, the assembly, constituent assembly to convince them with our proposal, with the proposal of feminist movement, and the main point of, uh, of uh, difference or of uh, uh, where uh, equality in uh, in private sphere and uh, the the fact that the men uh, remain the chief of family and uh, the question of equality in inheritance were very difficult points to 
uh, to be, uh, and that's why uh, just after we have a big, big fight, fight, and I, I think that for a feminist movement, it was the, um, it was uh, as important as the, the fight of parity, it was the fight about complementarity. When we propose equality, another party proposed complementarity between men and women. And uh, when you speak about complementarity, you don't speak about equality. It means that many laws can come, after discriminatory laws can come in the noun of complementarity. And the fight about complementarity was uh, very strong and uh, we managed to have uh, different kinds of people in the street now. We have really thousands of people uh, in the street to say, we don't want complementarity, we want equality between men and uh, women. And I think it was uh, uh, an important uh, success uh, for uh, women's rights. The Constitution came on uh, 26th of January uh, to devote many of uh, the demands of the feminist movement with consideration of equality between ma male and female citizens. Uh, one of the foundations of a democratic republican system. And uh, we have many chapters speaking about equality between men uh, and uh, women mainly chapter 21 and chapter 20, uh, 46, I won't speak, uh, I won't read them, but they are very important and we uh, consider as a feminist movement that uh, these uh, chapters are very positive to uh, move situation of women's rights in Tunisia. But at the same time, uh, we had, uh, even if we had an, uh, an article uh, speaking about the fact that uh, Tunisia uh, has, uh, uh, is a civil state based on citizenship, the will of the people, and the supremacy of law, we have the first article which speaks about the fact that uh, Islam is the religion of Tunisia. And so interpretation were possible. Uh, Tunisia state or Tunisia people. If uh, Islam is the, is the religion of state, it means that uh, Sharia law are the source of law. If the Islam is the, the religion of Tunisian, it means that it is personal fact. So uh, this uh, matter uh, is, is uh, important. Just to say that uh, in Tunisia, the term of the debate were uh, universal reference of human rights, were full equality and not other thing, and uh, uh, where uh, um, there, is, uh, there is an importance uh, that uh, women's rights uh, are in the center of the challenge. And I think the fact that uh, women were as present as that in all steps, in all steps, in all change, political change, because all political change were also made by Tunisia, protect a lot the transition uh, political transition in Tunisia. In other country, the, um, the role of uh, women's rights in political process wasn't as recognized as in Tunisia. And when you have the half of population not excluded, I think it is an important issue. I want to say that uh, this process was not uh, only in Tunisia and also Egyptian, uh, Egypt, uh, even if situation is uh, so different from Tunisia, political situation is, is very different. 
but in the constitution they speak about uh, feminist uh, Egyptian feminists uh, were divided about the constitution I don't know if uh, all people know the process of con uh, Egyptian constitution uh, there is donc, uh, in 2014 there is the new constitution after the work of uh, the commission with the 50 persons and, uh, in, uh, and it was under Sisi and under authoritarian uh, regime. And uh, for feminists, the debate were, uh, can we have some positive changes when you have as authoritarian uh, regime as that? And uh, some of them, uh, fight to improve the, um, the constitution and some of them consider that uh, it is not possible uh, to do that and even if there is some gains it will for the, uh, the stay for the power and not for uh, women's but uh, uh, now there is uh, um, an article article um, uh, 11 in the cons in Egyptian uh, constitution which speaks about equality between men and women and uh, the article is a um, it prescribes the state's commitment to ensuring equality between men and women to implementing positive discrimination measures to achieve equality and to combating violence against women and in all constitution we will find this terms. We will find them in the Tunisian constitution, we find them in the uh, Egyptian constitution. I had to say that Morocco was the first country just after the beginning of Arab uh, uprising who began with constitutional reforms. When just people um, uh, begin going to the street, the king announced uh, that there is a reform constitutional reform and ask to uh, a commission to do this and in this constitution we find that uh, uh, the principle of equality between men and women on civil rights political economical social cultural and environmental rights and encourage political women's participation so uh, the Yemenite committee charged to uh, to write uh, before uh, last uh, event, before situation, political uh, situation uh, falls, uh, and uh, the even Libyan committee charged to, to write uh, the constitution. I saw the, the two drafts of uh, Yemenite and of uh, Libyan. We find the same uh, things about women's rights and uh, they speak about uh, part political participation. There is a quota, 30%, not uh, parity, but 30% of uh, political partici participation of women. And there is equality, the fight against, uh, against the violence, equality of chains, and uh, all of that. Even in Syria, I want to speak about Syria, but even in Syria, on this uh, issue, but even in Syria, I said when he did uh, constitution in 2012, he put an article, many articles about women's rights. The question now is what value can this constitutional text for women's rights and for daily exercise of equality between men and women? Does this text have a real impact on the women's right in the region. I think that um, the process to have those rights is very important to analyze. And uh, it is uh, so different when you have a regime of Assad, who did this, and when you have a feminist movement who struggle and who uh, impose them after big debate in the society. The society, the, the debate in society when it bring uh, modification in, 
in uh, constitution is an important thing. But the fact is that women's rights were on the agenda of all constitutional reforms and that the presence of women in this uprising imposed to all of people charged by the reform, constitutional reform, to put the question of uh, uh, women's rights. Now, the fact is that the struggle is uh, so important to, to, to have laws conform to these constitutional rights and to have reality conform to this constitutional right. And the reality is really difficult today in the region. It's so difficult in the region with a lot, lot mainly of violence. And I will, it will be my uh, second um, part, uh, my second uh, talk, my second part in this talk. Uh, all people agree today to say that uh, the situation of uh, uh, violence against women in the region never, uh, never uh, was so bad than now. With uh, armed conflict and with terrorism and also with the transitional, with political change, we see now uh, uh, an increasing, real increase of violence against women all kinds of violence against women, sexual violence at the, in the first, trafficking of women, uh, all kinds of, um, of, um, of violence. But at the same time, another common finding is that, that this increase is not only the result of conflicts or insecurity, but also it is a way to prevent and to stop the important political participation of women, participation which may change deeply social relationship. We know that violence against women were really present in the, in the region. It is a universal, it is an important uh, way to uh, keep domination on women and it is in all countries. But there, is, there are countries who did the strategy against this, uh, this kind of uh, discrimination. And uh, in Arab uh, region, there is uh, very few countries who speak about and do. But since 2010, we have, at the same time, a real presence of women on the, on the street, on the political, on public space, but at the same time, a lot, a lot of violence against women. This violence against women, as I say, I think, and I'm not uh, the only one who said that, a lot of people said that, and it was evident in, um, in Egypt and uh, Tunisia too, it was a way to, uh, to exclude the women from public space and from political uh, work. At the same, I want to give, uh, there is many, 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 lots of reports about violence. Violence in Syria, women in Syria, refugee in Syria, in Iraq, situation is uh, really terrible. There is a lot of work uh, about uh, what uh, Egyptian woman uh, lives about, uh, with harassment, sexual harassment. And there is a lot of uh, work about uh, sexual uh, violence in Tunisia, in other countries too. Uh, so uh, I think that I don't need to prove that. But I want to speak about, at the same time we see a lot of uh, violence, we see a lot of new laws against violence in the region. So in Egypt, uh, authority were obliged to uh, the, f the civil society did a lot of pressure to have a law 
about sexual harassment and managed to have it in 2040. In Algeria, we have a new law about violence against women and a good uh, a law protecting women. Good, I don't know, uh, it's really, it's not enough. But there is a new law about uh, violence against women. It is in March 2015. It is, waiting adoption by Sena, but it was adopted in the, by the parliament. In Lebanon, there is a, a new, uh, a new uh, law about domestic violence. It, uh, it doesn't protect women in many spheres, and mainly, uh, for example, it, don't, uh, it doesn't speak about marital rape or uh, about, uh, but there is a new law about violence against women. In Tunisia, we have a proposal of uh, integral law to uh, protect, prevent uh, violence against women. This uh, integral law is, um, is still facing a lot of resistance, but we hope have this integral law against uh, violence in a few uh, months. It won't be complete because uh, until now there is many uh, special issues difficult to resolve, for example, also, marital rape, for example, is very uh, is not uh, really accepted. In Morocco, they are working on uh, penal codes, and I think the fact that there is uh, as um, as new uh, laws against uh, uh, violence is uh, the result uh, of two things: of uh, the increasing of violence against women, of course because there is a, a real problem, but also it is the pressure of uh, women's movement. And, so, and uh, we have to see uh, uh, that also. So, um, situation is not, uh, is complex. That's what I try about the, these two examples. When I speak about constitution and when I speak about uh, violence, I, I try to speak about the social change, deep social change in, in the region. And I think that uh, uh, women participa who participate to political change in, uh, in, in the region, even if this political change are until now in very, very difficult situation because the city political situation now is more complex than ever. The region, the geopolitical uh, map of the region is changing. International forces are trying uh, each one to take uh, his uh, part of, uh, and um, economical situation is very difficult in Tunisia. For example, the, the rate of unemployed people uh, is, is really high, more than 20%, and uh, for a high graduate, more than 50%. And women are the most losers in, uh, in this situation. Even when they are high graduate, they are the double of uh, men, high graduate, unemployed. And uh, in uh, this difficult situation, I think we have to see what is changing. And I think there is, there is a change in... Uh, in the, uh, in the region. Of course, I cannot speak about um, terrorism in a few words, but it is the main, uh, for example, in Tunisia, the main way to have the old system coming back is the fight against terrorism. That's what they are using now to have all the old system in the responsibilities. We have our uh, old, f uh, old policemen who are coming back because they are efficient with dictatorship, were efficient against uh, all kinds of, uh, of um, struggles. And now they are coming back to fight terrorism. And, uh, and the situation is, uh, is uh, more uh, complex than, than that. 
I, I will conclude to say that uh, the feminist movement in Tunisia through the experience of recent years, effective experience, has succeeded in placing the issue of equality and non-discrimination at the heart of the democratic transition and has achieved some success. And, uh, uh, and uh, that uh, the fact to accord this place to women's right to any political change is fundamental in uh, all, uh, all changes. The last thing I want to say, if I found my paper, is that uh, um, I would emphasize the fact, the fact that women's, uh, as I said, women's uh, movement is a very important actor of change, able to move society not only against patriarchy, but also facing economic, political, and cultural shows that enhance exploitation of women and discrimination against them. Uh, the second idea I would emphasize at, uh, at, uh, at the final is that it is not enough to underwork the women's situation in all Arab region, uh, that it is really marked more than ever by discrimination and violence, but it is important to say also that never women have been so present in political and social struggles, that new generation, uh, qualified generation with the new tools of uh, work are active and the new laws on women's rights and equality are on the agenda in all the region, even in the more repressive states. Women across the region are playing a social role to build more open and democratic society. And I think also that it is really possible to consider uh, from another side that violence and deep discrimination are also the result or are a reaction to those deep social changes on gender relationship. And thank you for... Uh...